in the Eastern Cape, bad roads are keeping pupils out of class. In Matatiele, promises of a new school, hostels and roads go unfulfilled. Some parents have decided not to send their children to school due to a lack of transport as they would be expected to travel over 25 kilometers across dangerous bridges. Here's ENCA's Desen Tatia with that story. All right, Desen joins us now actually uh, with an update from Matatiel. What a mess that I see behind you there, um, Desen, and I don't imagine that that's how all the roads in Matatiele look, but I do imagine that a significant number of them look like that, and even the ones that are paved, uh, that have tarmac, um, are also in a significant state of disrepair. Definitely, Tulas. Once you move out of the city centre, you will find a lot of the area looking like what you see around me now. I mean, we are in one of the rural villages on the outskirts of Matatiel, and this is where the children are affected by that situation, the situation which ultimately comes down to the state of the roads. So let me briefly tell you what's happening here. What you're seeing around me is just one of the areas where learners have their own schools that they attend in the various areas. So there are about five that are affected. Each of those schools has about between 70 and 100 pupils in them. But now what's joining them is what you'll see below me here. These are the roads that they would have to travel on to get to those schools. But the problem gets bigger than that. It's not just about getting to the local schools that I'm talking about, about those five schools. There's now a new school that's been built and the requirement was that they would have had to attend that school from January 19th. I'm now taking you into Noingana Primary School. This is one of those schools where the pupils would have had to move over to Intabeni Primary School. Unfortunately, they haven't been able to move. While there was a, a worry that they wouldn't have a school to go to this year, fortunately, the teachers and the principal here then decided that they would continue the learning activities at the school. I'm sure you can already see that even this school needs lots of improvement. So they are now caught between a rock and a hard place. The buses that were meant to be arranged or the transportation system that was meant to be arranged can't travel along these roads. So there's now been a delay in the implementation of migrating these pupils to the new school. Let me take you to the principal who I was chatting to earlier. Ma'am, Ms. Uh, Nandipa Madikwa is the principal here. Ma'am, we were talking about the situation that is facing the pupils currently. What has been the, the reason or uh, why is it that they haven't been able to move across to Ntabeni as they should have done on the 19th of January? I'll hold it for you, ma'am. Okay. The learners were supposed to be moving to Mecca at Ntabeni on the 19th. But we, we have received a message on the 18th that there is a problem. Maybe the, the departmental officials are still having a meeting with the transport department so we have to wait and they told us that on the 19th learners must remain in their schools until further notice what does that mean when it comes to reading materials preparation i mean you would have thought that you would be starting your year on that side at Ntabeni, but having to start the year here do you have everything that you need to continue teaching to teach here yes for now we don't have stationery there's no delivery yet and the parents, we have told them to buy books for their learners now because there is no stationer. Even the LT, the textbooks have not yet arrived. So how are you managing? To do? To continue without those uh, learning materials. We have a few exercise books, but I've told the parents to buy some books because the books that we are having are not enough. Mm. We are still waiting for the delivery. We are not sure when they are going to be delivered. Okay, and lastly, do you have any idea when the move will actually take place? We were told to, to, to wait, but yesterday we were told that maybe on the 15th of February, learners will be moving. 
Thank you so much for your time, ma'am. Tulas, I must also add that I did contact the education department here in the Eastern Cape, and they've said to me that they are ready from their side for that move that I'm talking about. The problem here is the transport department, and it's more than just arranging transport. I mean, you saw the state of the roads here. Those roads will actually have to be fixed before vehicles are able to travel safely on them. I'm hoping later in a report that I'll put together, I'll also be able to show you a bridge that is partially collapsed, and that is part of the journey that pupils here will have to take to make sure that they get to this new school. All right, thank you for that. Uh, a really interesting, uh, if not distressing, um, perspective from that side in Matatiel. That's ENCA's Jacin uh, Tatia there out in Matatiel. And part of the story there, while we're focusing on issues of transportation and the ease or otherwise of pupils being able to get to their school, you heard there the principal mentioning that actually they've not even received stationary and books. This is a problem we've been reporting on here on ENCA for the last uh, two weeks or so since schools uh, started reopening in the country, particularly in the Eastern Cape. MEC Fundelegate, there's one of them, one of those schools still. And the principal now says the parents must make a plan and buy their own books and stationery. Is it to say for those who have you know, a steady flow of income and you know, have hold uh, particular jobs uh, in society, etc., but if you are in a poor part of the country and you really are uh, poor, hmm, what a problem you face right at the start of the year.